This is called, uh, do you, are you familiar with like flood and drain aquaponics where the beds mm -hmm. flood and then they drain periodically? This is actually called a constant flood aquaponics system. So that water pump, you see that little guy in there with the foam pad on it? That's just a submersible water pump. It's about a thousand gallons an hour. It's like 60 watts, that's all it is. It pumps water uh, up underneath here and it pops up over here. Plants are in the way. But it pops up here and it splits into two different, two different lines. And if you look here, if you look over the edge, you'll see this distribution bar, this PVC. Mm -hmm. It's just a big square with holes in it. So it's just water spraying into the gravel through that PVC pipe. And the water level is regulated right here. Um, and I'll let you guys each kind of pop up in here. But there's just a, a pipe in there, a PVC pipe that sets the water level. So the water is filling up and it's spilling over that pipe back down into the fish tank. And that water just stays all the time. It's constantly flooded in here. Now a lot of people are like, well how do the plants not get root rot if they're just sitting in water the whole time? The reason is because the water is being sprayed from all around so it's all congregating and being forced to replenish itself as it goes back toward the center. So it's always radially coming into the center mm -hmm. and it's highly oxygenated. Plants can always be in water if you have enough oxygen in the water. Mm -hmm. When you overwater plants in your, in your soil, uh, that water is stagnant. It doesn't have any oxygen in it. That's how you get root rot. It's not from too much water, it's from no oxygen. That's where root rot happens. So this constantly... It's constantly const going 24-7. Constantly 24-7. Okay. Yep. Okay, I see. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, so you have that, so we don't have any timers, nothing. It's nothing. just on. Um, and it keeps that water level. The reason I like this is because if your water pump dies, you have a power outage, then that's the, the drain pipe in there, it just stops and all that water stays in there so your plants don't wilt up immediately. You don't have about a day before they'll get root rot, so you have some time to respond. <laughs> oh, you have a tree seed hit you? I'm sorry. Uh, don't sue me, tree please. Tree seed than something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with, a, with this system, you have the insurance that if, you're, if something happens to your pump, that your plants aren't gonna dry out because the water stays in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all it is. It's just a water pump pumping into these beds, spraying all around, and the water makes itself into the drain, gets back into the drains, and then goes back. So it's just recirculating all day. So the first thing I do when I come out here is I listen for that sound of spraying. And I look over into these drain pipes just to make sure that there's water coming up in here. And a stool for you. Hold up. Step on that, might be able to see. <laughs> and you'll see here that the that's our water level. It stays at that level all the time. And you'll see how the water's going that way. Mm. It's because it's getting sprayed from the bars and it has to go. It's just shooting toward the middle drain. Mm -hmm. So all these plants have just refreshed nutrient solution going past their plant roots all the time. So it's gotta be sloped this way or something? Huh? Is it gonna be sloped this way? No, it's Inside? not sloped at all. Oh, it's it's all even on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, and these are about a, just about a foot deep. Mm -hmm. So this is a false bottom here. And this is a pond liner that you put in here. Yep. That's a pond liner. Now these are actually made of what's called IBC totes. Um, yeah. So this was, this wood came from a community garden that had been abandoned. So we just pressure washed rotten wood. That's how you get this nice finish on it. So this is all, we, we made this whole thing for like 80 bucks. Oh, wow. like no joke, we just went and got all the materials. This is a false bottom, so you can see we store our stuff in here. Oh, so the um, only over there, I thought yep. it was under. So you see, if you that's just one of those chemical storage tanks. We cut the top off of it, that's our fish yeah. tank. And then these are made of two other sections of, of uh, tank. Steel, steel uh, cage tanks. And, and um, it just runs through that pipe and into the fish tank. That's it. Yep. Very simple plumbing. Uh, and there's guides. So like when we go follow up and get you on the email list, just request and I'll send you some links to like okay. build it yourself guides. I haven't developed a guide myself, but um, some other people have really good YouTube videos about it. And it's worth watching. Now you see all my. Uh, <clears throat> I've had to support some of the growth. These things are so heavy because they're filled with water and rocks that I've had to put up some supports. 
Uh, I actually had to get a car jack in there and whip the thing up. And it was to collapse in one day. Uh, so the weight is something you have to really be in tune with. Build something strong enough. Oh, so that's not a solid, um, a firm plastic. That's just sheeting for the um, fish. Uh, what is that? Is that one? So that is a what they call an IBC tote. You'll see on the back of like pressure washing car vans, it'll be a big chemical storage tank with a steel yeah. cage around oh, okay. it. That's all that is. And we just cut it to size. Okay. And it holds water. And this is just a regular tank. Like, does this light here have any like help for the fish? Just to no, it's fish? really just so we can see them. Yep. And uh, I got this online. So if you don't have a light, how fun is that? That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a light at the school. Yeah. What middle schooler wants to? Well, I don't want. The cool to. thing about aquaponics <laughs> is you have fish. I mean, gardens are cool, but fish are really cool. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so there's a little blue light for at night. You know, you can have that, and it actually looks cool at night, but it's during the day, so you can't get the contrast. But that's the um, that light costs about a hundred bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. How many core do you have in here? About 15, and that's about the max we're going to put in there because they're going to get this big yeah. in a year. This has only been running for four months or so. What do you do once they get too big? We, you could sell them because yeah. I think this might be a little too small for a koi that big, yeah. So we'll probably let them get to about 12 inches mm -hmm. and we'll probably sell them. Uh, mm -hmm. Koi that big, sell for sixty dollars on eBay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you don't and, necessarily have a local purchaser. Yeah. Well, we got the first ones from a lo local pet store called Last Place on Earth. Yeah, I love that. Place. Yeah. So we. <laughs> uh, it's the only real pet store. It is. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It, it is. I mean, it's the only place you can actually get real advice. You go to PetSmart and try and talk to the fish guy. You're basically just talking to some guy who also works in dog food. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, yeah, so we got a, the first batch from there. The other ones we ordered online. They overnight shipped them. Got them for three bucks a piece. Mm. And they, um, so you do it whichever way you want. Uh, so that's, you just have a simple water pump. It pumps up there. So that's how it operates. The first thing I do when I get here, after I've checked to make sure everything's running, let me go get my test kit real quick.